Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. <laughs> hey Cherise, hey Jill, hi Beth, how are you guys? Woo! Happy Tuesday everyone. Hello. Hello Saida. All right guys, happy Tuesday. Hmm. Every Tuesday, I do a demo at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Hi. Hi, Adria. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Okay. So I announced last week that we are going to do a pre-boot camp today. So the uppercase or capital boot camp begins today with a pre-boot camp um, but the official boot camp will begin july july 1st through july 7th so it starts officially on sunday but like we did last time we did a day zero or a pre-boot camp uh, which is what we're going to do today um, on my website i uploaded an old exemplar from last year and I literally just pulled it out from my um, from an, a handout that I that I have so it's it's old it's not updated it's not that it's not perfect let's just <laughs> leave it at that so I have this available uh, you can download it and print it out um, I have one with the arrows sorry one with the arrows and one without the arrows so if you're interested in that, you can download that on my website. You just go to anintran.com slash copperplate bootcamp. Go to the uppercase one and uh, scroll down to the guide sheets uh, part. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, there are two versions of the guide sheets also again available here just go to this website and click on the capitals or uppercase link and we have the short version and let me see if I could go like this I can't really see it there are two versions there's a short version and the long version the short version is uh, I didn't have the long version for the last one um, did anybody here participate in the lowercase boot camp so let me just pull out some of the sheets that we use for the lowercase boot camp. Um, so for the lowercase boot camp, what we did was we had, we did just one row of each drill per day. So it wasn't, you know, a whole page thing. Uh, but I realized afterwards that maybe it's a good idea to have the option to do both. So let's say, you know, maybe you only had time to do one row because, I don't know, you have a, a busy day. But maybe you wanted to commit more time to it and you wanted to spend, um, you know, more time doing this drill and, but you only had this sheet. So, you know, some of you did a whole page of, of the drill. So I gave you the option of either doing just one row or you know doing a full sheet so this time I created a short version like this and a long version so it's up to you which version you'd like to use um, I'm not sure yet which one I'll have time to do probably just a short version um, for now so anyway there you go that's the difference between the long version and the short version Okay, all right, let's get started. So I'm just going to use the short version. Um, you can see that here on the short version, we have just day one here, whereas in the long version, the day one is a full page, okay? Or let's see, I have some, we have some fun ones here. Some different drills out of the ordinary drills in by out of the ordinary, I mean out of the ordinary for me. 
Um, so here for day four, we have just these box drills, but if you download the long version, you get you know two rows of box drills, you get a couple of these wedge triangular shape ones and some other ones too. So that's the main difference is you get a whole page per day with the long version. Okay, so that's enough um, intro. Now I've just mixed up all my pages, right? That's how it is. Okay. So let's start here. One of the most important things that we overlook when we do drills or uh, we practice is we overlook the goal. We overlook what our intention is. So before you begin the boot camp, I want you to think about I want you to think about why you're doing the boot camp. So I'd love to know what what are some of your goals? What would you like to achieve over the next week? Um, what do you hope to to accomplish by participating in the boot camp? Anybody want to share? <laughs> okay, maybe you're typing. So my goal for this week is simply just to get back into practice mode, uh, which was my goal for last time. Uh, thanks, Jane. Yes, consistency with shades. That's a great goal. I feel like I'm constantly, that's constantly my, one of my goals is <laughs> consistency with shading. So um, be sure to really think about what your goals are. And it could be something small like, you know, maybe working on your slant lines or learning how to control your pen better. Okay, let's see what you guys wrote. Better form and consistency. You just want to learn. Cool. Perfect my skills. Daily dedicated focus practice. Strong foundation. Awesome. Not assaulting eyes. Got it. <laughs> that's that's also one of my goals. Um, forming better, better ovals. That's great, guys. That's amazing. I love those goals. Those are all great goals. So everybody just, everyone has, um, is in a different place. And I love that. That's what I love about this community is, you know, we're all in this together, first of all. But I love that, you know, everyone's just gathering and doing things like boot camps together. Okay, so I'm going to write my goal later because that would take forever. I need to really think about that. So let's skip on to um, the basic capital strokes. So if you don't have this downloaded or end printed yet, that's okay. You can just take notes or you can rewatch later. Um, let me change the angle of my camera here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to identify the lines on our paper and let's talk about them. I'm going to put a guard sheet under here so I don't get any oil from my hands onto my fresh paper. Okay, so let's talk about the lines. We have this red line here, which is our baseline. Then we have this blue line here, which is our header line or waistline. Then we have two lines above the header line. We have our first ascender line and second ascender line. And below the baseline, we have two lines, the first descender line and second descender line. The space between the header line and the baseline is called our X height. I'll be using the Hunt 101 nib today and 
to me ink. I've printed my guide sheets on HP Premium Choice laser jet paper. Um, what else? Oh, and this pen holder was a gift from my dear friend Nina, and it is by Chris Yoke. Thanks, Nines. Okay, so let's review the basic capital strokes, starting with the capital stem or the compound curve or a line of universal beauty, whatever you like to call it. So the compound curve, well actually I call it the capital stem. Let's begin the capital stem at the first ascender line. And we're going to begin this with a curve and then a straight line and then we're going to end the stroke with another curve. So it's composed of a curve, straight line, and then another curve. So we'll begin at the second ascender line. And end on the baseline. Clearly I did not warm up. <laughs> but let's not talk about that. So this is a capital stem. Notice that my shade here is on the 55 degree slant. And my curves are hairlines. The next stroke, let's number these. The next stroke is just another compound curve, or it could just be a partial compound curve. So we begin this stroke typically here on the baseline. And we'll begin with a curve, straight line, and another curve. So it can be the same shape as the capital stem, only there's no shading here. And again, typically you can, you know, you begin from the second, I'm sorry, you begin from the baseline and come up to the second ascender line. However, you can also begin here if you wanted to. You can come down, you can pull this stroke down, just be sure not to apply any pressure. So either way is correct. So that is stroke number two. I'm actually beginning to wonder if all these strokes are going to fit on this line. <laughs> let's, let's pray and hope for the best. Okay, the third stroke is the oval. And we'll begin the oval here on the second ascender line and we'll begin with a hairline and end with the hairline and come back up come back up to the second ascender line Maybe it's a good idea to draw some arrows. I don't know if you guys find that helpful. Maybe it's intuitive. So that is number three. Number four. So I would, I like to refer to this sometimes too as a vertical oval because technically it's upright and vertical even though it's it's on a slant. So this next one, it seems appropriate to call this the horizontal oval. I also sometimes call it a, the entry oval. So I like to begin the stroke also here on the second ascender line. Now you guys, before we continue, I just want to um, make a disclosure that everybody has, you know, a a personalized script so what I'm sharing with you here is how I do it now how I do it may be different from how Dr. Joe does it or how Suzanne does it or how Cherise does it or how David does it or however whoever okay so whatever it is that I'm sharing with you here is just my way of of doing copper plate script okay now that we have that over with let's move on to our fourth stroke so I'll, again, I begin this stroke here 
on the second ascender line and I'll begin with the hairline and then a slight shade and then I'll come back up come back up to the second ascender line and you can see that this is kind of like a teardrop shape or almond shape some people like this to be a little bit rounder um, it's really up to you what um, what shape you like. There are so many different ways to do copper plate. <sighs> Sorry, what's that, scribe, Scribe's Apprentice? <laughs> Thanks, S. Okay, let's see, what are we missing? <laughs> I honestly don't think we're gonna fit here, but let's try, okay. So next, let's talk about the loops. So there are three kinds of loops. This first one here, I like to begin it halfway between the second and first ascender line. And I, again, I like to begin with a hairline, then um, swell into a light shade. So I'm going to make an oval here, a clockwise oval that loops around like this. Sometimes it's easier to draw it first and then talk about it. It's not perfect as you can see, but let's pretend that it is. <laughs> so again, I like to begin this stroke here halfway between the second and first ascender line. I like to begin with a hairline, come down with a slight shade. See this oval here? And then a second oval here in front of the stroke. And notice that this uh, right shade is slightly thicker than this back shade. And one thing that I learned from Dr. Joe is that this front shade, I'm sorry, this back shade and this front shade are parallel to each other. Okay. Okay, we've got three more strokes to go. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna fit here. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to squeeze it in at the front. Okay, all right, stroke number six. Stroke number six begins the same exact way as stroke number five. The only difference is we are going to, um, instead of coming down here and ending the stroke here, about halfway between the first and the header line, we're going to pull this, we're going to pull a shade down to the baseline and then come back up to the header line. So here we go. We're going to begin the same exact way as sh uh, stroke number five. Okay, notice that they're the same size same shape so if we covered if we covered this part and this part they should be more or less the same size and shape that's what we're aiming for okay number seven begins the same exact way as five and six the only difference is instead of coming down, we're going to just come down and then change our mind and come back up to the second center line. Okay, I'm coming down, just kidding. <laughs> okay. So this oval here, this oval here, this oval here, they're all identical as best as you can. And if you want to, you can come back here and retrace a shade right there. Okay, 
So there's an eighth one, but you know what? Maybe we'll just do that uh, when I actually write some letters. Let's keep this top row pretty. Hmm? How's everybody doing so far? Are you guys taking notes as, uh, are you guys taking notes? Are you doing this with me? Are you having dinner? Are you playing with your cat? What's everybody doing? Okay, let me just clear my nib and then we'll come down to, and we'll, we'll write some letters. Notes, awesome. Cool. Mental notes, okay. Mental notes are good. Making dinner. Wow, what's for dinner? Oh, and wine. <laughs> Best way to take notes, I guess, with wine or coconut water. The size of the ovals. Uh, it depends on you, really. Um, there is a general rule for the size of ovals, but you'll find that certain penmen prefer a narrower oval or a more rounded oval. Um, so it really depends on what your preference is. There's no um, one way, really. So it depends. Sometimes it's good to examine your lowercase letters and then, you know, so if you, if your lowercase letters have a really narrow oval, so for instance, maybe your A's looks like this, then your capital oval will be, should be narrow too. I mean, it doesn't have to be super narrow, but we want our uppercase to match our lowercase. Now I'm just really exaggerating the narrowness of this C. Now if I had a rounder script, okay, more full oval, then I would like for my capital letter to be a little fuller as well. Okay, just a general rule to follow. Hi, uh, Brian. Uh, the best nib to use? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, that's a subjective, I have a subjective <laughs> answer for that. Um, it really p depends on you. My favorites are the Hunt 101 and the Hunt 22, and it also depends on the X height that you're writing. So if you're writing big, maybe you pref you know, you'd rather have a more flexible pen, um, if, or it also depends on how thick you like your shades, all those things. But I personally like the Hunt 101. Okay, let's see, is it just improve? Um, yes, you could do the ovals going counterclockwise or clockwise, sorry. You could create your own drills. So the drills that I'm going to share with you for the boot camp are just drills that I find helpful and ones that I assign to my students. But there are so many drills out there and maybe the, you know, you'll find different drills that are more helpful for you depending on what, uh, what your goals are. Um, in another video, can you share different sized ovals and how you would adjust your script accordingly? That sounds great, Charisse. Um, yeah, why not the Leonard Principle? That's a good one too. Okay, let's move on. How much time do we have? Okay, it's actually already 4.30, but let's do a few letters. Let's do, uh, let's, um, at least do a letter, um, at least touch uh, touch on one of, on every uh, one of these strokes. So let's do one. Let's do B because B will have this capital stem and the loop. So here we go. We'll start with a capital stem.
Okay, so we have stroke one and stroke five. How about stroke two? All right, Ruby, let's do a capital M. Again, there are many versions to copper plate script. This is just one way to do them. So this is stroke two. Stroke three. And in this, in the lines below, what I had intended these lines for is for you to draw your entire uppercase exemplar. So, you know, you put these letters or try your best to fit them here. And uh, one of the most important things when we're practicing is to track our progress. That's really important. So my intention here for this sheet is to draw, to have you draw your, your uppercase letters just so you have something to look at at the end of the week. So on July 7th, you have something to, to look at to compare your progress um, once the boot camp is finished. All right, next we have stroke number three, which is the oval, and stroke number four. So let's do a capital C, which was, we just did not appear. So we're going to be going with this entry oval or a horizontal oval and come down okay so we have stroke number four and stroke number three here okay we just did five so now let's do six Stroke number six. Stroke number seven. So I think we've got all of them so far, just missing the seven. Let's do a letter T, beginning with a capital stem. And notice that this capital stem is shorter than our previous capital stem. So we began that first capital stem on the B, on the second ascender line, but for the T and the F, we're going to shorten it by a half space, or more or less, depending on the style of the script that you're studying. And if you wanted to make this an F, you would just add a crossbar. Hold on just a second. Mommy. Hold on just a second, guys. <laughs> um, crisis averted, guys. Everything's okay. 
no need to call 911. Um, okay, so that's basically it. Um, the difference between capital I and capital J. Sure, we could do, we could do that. Um, I'll just do it here on the same sheet. <laughs> it's hard being a calligraphy mom, hmm? calligra mom. Behind the scenes. Okay, so for uh, capital I and capital J, um, there are a couple of differences. So for capital I, capital I looks like this. Okay. My capital stem here is only three space is tall. One, two, three. My capital stem ends with a terminal dot. Um, and that's pretty much the difference. The main two differences is that my capital stem is three units tall and it ends with a terminal dot. The capital J, the capital stem of the capital J is five units long. Okay, so they're nearly identical if you cover the bottom portion. But the capital J is one, two, three, four, five units tall, and it ends with a descending loop. So you may be familiar with the descending loop because we did this. Uh, you'll see it in lo lowercase letters like G. Okay, so this stroke here is exactly the same as this stroke here. So those are the main differences between I and J. Great question. All right, guys, that is all the time that I have for today. Are there any last questions that maybe don't require writing? All right, so the boot camp will officially begin. Day one will officially begin on Sunday, July 1st. And I'll be broadcasting every day for seven days at the same time every single day, which is 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, that's, that's it. And if for any reason I'm going to be late, I will certainly post it, but I'll do my best to to show up on time at 4 p.m. And there's um, there's IGTV now, which I'm really excited to try. So I'm going to save this video and then I'm going to upload it to IGTV. And I think it stays forever. That's my understanding, right? It doesn't expire or does it expire? Hmm. Um, hopefully it doesn't expire because that's, that's my understanding. <laughs> all right guys well if you don't have any more questions for me i will go ahead and sign off go ahead and download the guide sheets um, if you want to use it you're also welcome to use your own um, guide sheets and the most important thing with this boot camp is to show up you know rain or shine show up do your best um, and take this as a learning experience. So even if, you know, whether you're, you're just starting off or whether you've been doing calligraphy for a while, but maybe you need a boost or you want somebody to practice with, we're all in this together. And this is probably my favorite thing to do is do these kinds of challenges with all of you. And it's really, it, it motivates me for sure. Um, D, we could do D now because my kids are quiet. Should we do that? We could do a quick D and then I should go. But that way we don't have to do it next time because next time we'll be doing drills. Okay, let's do a quick D. All right.
Okay, so we're going to begin the letter D with a capital stem. And then we're going to add, um, so this is stroke number one. Then we're going to add a kind of like a, not kind of, but a compound curve here. Okay, a compound curve is a curve that changes direction. So in this case, we're, we're curving this way, which is um, clockwise. And then here we're changing direction, we're t curving counterclockwise. So we're going to add that stroke. And then we're going to finish with an oval. Okay, something like that. And this is going to be much wider than what I've drawn here. Or thinner, depending on your style of script. So if your script is narrow, then this is perfect. And what we're going to do here is we're going to aim to place this capital stem right here. Okay, bisecting this space here. Give me a minute, Miles. Okay, I'll just draw this quickly. Minecraft is very, very important and my son is wanting to play, so. Okay, all right, here we go. Capital stem. Here is that, that compound curve. Bye, Cherise. Come up. Okay, so it's much wider here. Not perfect, but aim for equally distant lines here. And the distance from this hairline and this hairline from here to here is roughly about the same distance as this hairline and this shade, more or less. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's this is the proportion that you're aiming for. And notice that this loop here is quite long, so you don't want to make this teeny tiny little loop like this. Okay, just extend it out a little bit more. And there you go. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on Sunday for day one of the boot camp. Okay, talk to you guys later. See you later. Bye.